things have proven to be helpful, but you still have that stigma of people not wanting to, um, like I've seen a lot of advertising when they were trying to legalize in the state. Um, there's still that stigma about what it's going to do to the community and that group of people who still don't believe that it is actually helpful. Um, would you say that you still face that, trying to help children with this thing that is still viewed in a negative light? I, oh, absolutely. So the question was, do we still face a stigma as cannabis and is it helpful versus harmful, essentially? And, and yeah, absolutely. I mean, education is our, is, is our biggest uh, boulder, you know. There's just a real lack of, everyone has a strong opinion these days and not a lot of information. And the less information they have, the stronger their opinion. It's the Dunning-Kruger effect of the world. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's really difficult. Um, and it's just, I don't know how much time, I could talk for an hour just on that alone. But yeah, I'm sure you experienced that as well. Same thing's going on with vaccines. It's a lot of disinformation. So I'm doing exemptions and I'm just getting fought. They're like, oh, vaccines are safe and effective. That's the end of the story. Well, it's not. So anyway, same thing with this. It's, uh, it's, if you really research cannabis, you'll find out that it's uh, very safe and effective. Um, but then we keep running into the stuff like it's not legal and, and forced to get blocked because Governor Brown wants his taxes and all that kind of craziness. It's like, well, wait a minute. Uh, we, what about these kids? So that's it. I, I, will say, I, I will say also, though, that that's why ch charities and compassion work is so important because that all changes when your loved one gets sick. So I've had people from the sheriff's department who yelled at me at one meeting and called me two months later when their nephew started seizing. And we helped them secretly because they're afraid. I've had families from Beale Air Force Base call me, terrified they're gonna get fired, but scared for their loved one's life. I've had families from the fire department, churches where they're afraid their church group. It's a cultural thing that really shelters, they shelter themselves against being educated about it, unfortunately. Uh, and when they come to us, we help them. any child I just can't say no to, right? So what I will say is as that happens, their paradigm shifts immediately. Um, when they start to see results, even if, you know, not a cannabis isn't magic, it doesn't save every life, um, but it improves every quality of life, especially to those with terminal illness. So the kids who can smile again, ease their suffering, even though they're not gonna make it, some brain cancers, very low success rate. But the difference in those days is just as powerful. It's not all about if, if it's not gonna save you, don't do it. There's something special to be said for just easing suffering in our communities. And uh, when you experience that firsthand, all that silliness goes out the window. The problem is um, the people with the strongest opinions and who end up harming the most people with those misinformed opinions, they haven't had those experiences. you know. And it's very difficult to, to teach that without that first-hand experience, especially when they're unwilling to listen. Are we out of time, or what do we got? I have a question. No one's starting to How do we, as business owners, how do we get donations to whether legal black market? Like myself, I want to say I've given like maybe 7,500 seeds out to this county and told everybody to find a way to get plants for surge. Thank you. Okay, well, so, hi camera. <laughs> so we, we're shut down, we can't, I can't accept um, donations. Uh, but with that being said, you can give away cannabis in, in, in products in California. And what we have to do, and I'm still a father whose son needs medicine, and I know a lot of families who do need medicine. So uh, I think that legally we can absolutely connect donations with where they need to go. Uh, it's just extremely cumbersome because we can't function as, as the, the middle man for that to help facilitate that process. So, so what I would say to people who want to donate cannabis, there's always someone who could benefit from your gift. And I think 
that working with cannabis, that's enrooted in the spirit of working with cannabis. Uh, whether it's kids, wh you know, what's your passion? Whether it's veterans, whether it's seniors, whether it's hospice care, right? Whether it's mental health, there's somewhere that you could take that work and a portion of that can benefit and uplift your community. And so um, there's ways to do that and it's just connecting with the patients. And if you have things that you'd like to get with to families of kids who need it, I could, we could connect you in a way where we could do that uh, legally and responsibly. <laughs> I would uh, like to make a comment uh, and see if you guys are both comfortable with it. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I think is really good about this being the first panel or one of the first discussions of this day is uh, the medical use of cannabis really is at the heart of cannabis. Uh, the legalization effort that's happened in California over the last 20 some years started because of the medical benefit of cannabis. People's direct experience showed them that the prohibitionist propaganda was bullshit, pardon my language. And we've moved the conversation a lot, not just here in our local jurisdiction, but across the state and across the world for that matter. And it's medical that's helping to change that story. And we all appreciate, I appreciate the, as it's called, recreational or inspirational aspects of cannabis. But the real movement on this question around prohibition had to do with legitimate medical use. And one of the real tragedies of California legalization is despite 20 some years of actual practical experience of seeing cannabis work as medicine, state law has basically dismantled all that mechanism that was created across our state. And you as individuals can reach out to your elected officials both locally and at the state level and make them aware of this problem. Like I said, the need did not go away just because the rules changed. And they are supposed to listen to us. They are our representatives, but you need to stand up and speak for some of these families, some of our children who need this as medicine. And pardon my little rant there, but one last thing I want to say is in the conversation about CBD, I wanted to pop up and just say, I tend to think of CBD, and I've been playing with it for a number of years, and uh, it is the part of cannabis that helps me and others feel good. There's nothing wrong with feeling good. It's actually a good thing. And there's way too many things in our life that want us to feel bad and scared and driven. And this plant is, in fact, truly a healing plant. And uh, so that's, I guess, all I got on that. And I, I would ask if either of you want to say anything else before we wrap up talk, and or if there's any questions. You're, you're talking the wrong guy. <laughs> well, anything else? That, are we uh, out of time or interest or where are we at this point? I think we're Te technically late. Uh, so, so let me just try to wrap up with some thoughts. One is that cannabis can treat darn near anything, especially if you know what you're doing. Um, the research is coming along uh, slowly but surely. A lot of it's overseas. Israel's a real hub of good research. Um, I've got some good research on the effects of cannabis in autism and in dementia and in a whole lot of other things and it's really looking good. So that's great. Uh, we've got all these new cannabinoids uh, be being discovered as we go along. I think one of the things that needs to happen is that these uh, plants need to be bred for higher whatever it is, CBG as an example, higher myrcene, which is one of the terpenes and all that, so that they're more effective. CBD plants are way more effective than, than the ones that didn't have any CBD in them for CBD purposes. Well, what about CBG purposes or CBC, all that, all that stuff. What about the terpenes and all that? So anyway, I'm looking for uh, those of you that are interested in this to keep looking at this and go, okay, what's the next CBD and how do I breed it and grow it and make it available at a decent price? Because you will benefit, well, so will the patient. So we could have better pain relieving cannabis, better anxiety relieving cannabis, a lot better sleep cannabis than we have, I think. What do you, you guys with me on this? Or, I mean, okay, good. Looks like they're in agreement, so good. I didn't go way out too far. Good. So anyway, that's where we need to go. And uh, 
I'd say if you're in the game, uh, study some of the science about this and see, okay, yeah, and if you need resources on that, you know, talk to me or Forrest or Wade, um, and uh, there's some pretty good stuff out there. Thank you so much.